Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and in today's video we are going to look at pens and pencils. So in a previous video I did five different ways that you can transfer a design for embroidery but I wanted to delve into that a little bit deeper now and look at the actual pens that you can use to draw your design onto your fabric with. So I've got a really good selection here so let's dive in and have a look at those. So I've used the prick and pounce method to put the design temporarily onto my fabric that I'm going to show you today because this video is about the pens that we're going to use to draw it on permanently. So it's a really accurate method and you can use it on any kind of fabric which makes it really great. But um, you can use um, the uh, tracing method um, as well or any of the other methods that we looked at in that five ways to transfer your design and um, because this is really all about the pens. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the humble pencil and the thing that you need to know about this is not a normal graphite pencil. This is um, a mechanical pencil or propelling pencil depending where you are in the world. And this has got a graphite lead in it and if you use a normal pencil, um, one like this, the um, the graphite will smudge very very easily and if you were using light coloured threads on it when you pull and your cat's not hanging around today um, and when you pull your light coloured um, threads through it, the graphite can come off on the threads so if you want to use a pencil I suggest not a graphite pencil but use a coloured pencil instead now I've got a white one here we'll talk about that later and then I've just got an ordinary purple coloured pencil and these have actually got wax uh, leads in them they've got a wax content so they feel very different um, to that I'll just put it under this camera so you can see that here um, and make sure your lead's nice and sharp you can't do a nice fine design line if you've got a blunt pencil so sharpen the pencil first so let's have a look and see what that looks like so just talk briefly about the setup I've got here so I've um, got my butterfly design that I'm just going to demonstrate on here um, and I've got this framed up already um, on some stretch bar frames um, it's better to have the fabric taut when you're drawing your design on it um, the fabric moves otherwise however well you tape it down it can move easily so I suggest that you frame it up first and I've also got just a book underneath here so I've got actually a solid surface to press down onto if you just do it in the the um, frame it can bounce a little bit and that makes it harder so you want this bit to be nice and accurate so that your stitching is accurate later so just get yourself prepared frame it up and put something solid underneath so let's just try out the pencil it's nice and sharp and I'm just going to go quite lightly with it and you can go slowly it's not about speed it's about accuracy so the great thing about coloured pencils specifically is that you can pick the colour that goes with your design or with your fabric so you can choose it to match your threads just in case you don't cover that line up. It's coming out nice and delicately. Now obviously I'm doing this on a white fabric. We'll talk about dark fabrics later and anything in between. So you could choose your pencil to suit your fabric colour as I've mentioned just pick it up a little bit so that comes out quite nice and accurately and quite simple as well I don't need any specialist equipment a lot of people have got coloured pencils lying around so that is the simple pencil Okay, so the next one I'm going to look at is the ballpoint pen. Um, you might know it as a biro if you live in the UK, other makes are available. Um, and I hesitated a bit about putting this one in, but the reason I'm putting it in is because apparently, according to Wikipedia, this is the most used pen in the world. Everybody can get their hands on one of these. And sometimes, you know, you need to just have whatever's to hand. Um, you might be in a rush or for whatever reasons you could probably get your hand on a ballpoint pen um, and I have seen these used a lot in India so in Indian embroideries they grab their fabric grab a ballpoint pen and they just draw their design straight on and the first time I saw this I was like oh, it's a ballpoint pen what are you doing but um, I did try a little bit and I was actually a bit of a convert so we are going to put that in this video and give it a go to show you what it looks like so just want to mention the ink in these. Um, they have a dye ink and that's suspended in an oil based substance and it's the oil that makes the rollerball go round nice and smoothly. So that's how they work. So um, it's always worth just trying them, especially with ballpoint pens because often they dry out. Try it on a little bit of fabric first. And just make sure your pen's working and you can also just feel what that feels like on the fabric. It actually writes really nicely. I was very pleasantly surprised when I just tried this out. 
Um, not particularly a fine one, so that might be something you want to consider if you're doing an intricate design, but let's try it on a butterfly. So the same butterfly that I've got before. So it's quite a small design this, but I'm just going to go carefully again. And it is surprising how easily this writes on the fabric. It's much easier than the pencil. And that oil-based ink does mean that that goes on really nicely. The problem with um, ballpoint pens, um, I'm sure everybody's come across this, the ink can clog up um, and you get suddenly a big blob of it. Um, and if you, if you smudge that, that isn't coming off either. So just be aware of that. That tends to happen if the pen's a bit older. So, But it goes on beautifully smoothly. A little bit of a convert, <laughs> I'm scared to say that, of using a ballpoint pen. This is permanent if you've ever tried to get a ballpoint pen out. So that went on really nicely. Um, try it first before you decide, but it is an option if you want it. Okay, so the next one I wanted to look at is the gel pen, um, also sort of ink pen. So I'm going to include these gold ones um, in here as well. They're not exactly gel pens, they're more like a gold ballpoint pen, but I wanted to put these in here because the colours are really interesting. So I've got a couple of different mates. Um, it's just a um, stationer's one, um, a uni ball one. I've got a jelly roll one as well, um, another uni ball one. And I think this is another jelly roll pen here. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, so these can be really interesting if you want to use different coloured fabrics. I'm still going to do it on the white one, but we will test out um, these white and the fluorescent one a bit later on the dark fabric. But let's just try out a gold one first. I'm just going to keep my bit of fabric to hand because I think this one is going to blob a little bit. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that and make sure it doesn't blob on the butterfly. So here we go. Again, it goes on nice and evenly because it's similar to the ballpoint pen in the ink that it has on it. But if you were doing something like gold work, a gold pen would be great to draw your design on because then you're doing gold over gold. And if you don't quite cover your lines, it's not going to be so obvious. And then I'm just going to try this fluorescent one in the middle. So this is a jelly roll pen. These are slightly different ink in these ones and that it's suspended in a jelly, or they're called jelly roll pens, um, but the ink is more opaque and it tends to show up a lot better. So I'm going to try this on the white fabric and on the dark fabric later. Wow, well, it does show up. It's a bit of a random colour. I just had this for something else. You don't have to use a fluorescent pen, but I just wanted to show you what that looked like and how well that that shows up. So great for different coloured fabrics and darker fabrics as well. So this one's one of my go-to pens. I like using these. Uh, this is actually a drawing pen and it is a water and fade proof pigment ink. So it's waterproof ink. So this is not going to come off and it's not going to smudge. And the things that I like about this specifically is these different widths of nib you can get in. So this one is super fine, 0 0.05 is really, really, really tiny. So if you're doing something very um, delicate, very small, you can get a lot of accuracy and a lot of detail in your design. So that's a good time to use these pens. Um, there's a 0.1, um, 0.2 is my go-to sort of size. So we'll try that. One. Now, um, and because it's um, permanent ink, obviously once you've drawn with it, you can't rub it out. So um, you do have to be careful when you're drawing. It's a bit of a one chance only. So if you're a bit worried about um, not being able to draw so accurately, you may want to practice a bit first before you use this. But let's try it out and see what it looks like. I'm doing all these extremely lightly. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. If I leave the pen on you can get blobs it will soak into the fiber so you don't need to do that you can just do very light lines and you can see how fine that line is coming out get a lot of detail with this and this is not even the finest pen so but once it's on it's on so be confident that you know what you're doing you can always practice a couple of times before you do it on a piece of paper if you're not sure. But I like using these pens. You can see the line clearly because it's black. 
and you get that beautiful fine line. You know, you know clean your foot. <laughs> Hello, matey. Playing with pens today. You gonna help me? Probably not. <laughs> right, let's carry on. <laughs> he might stay and he might not. So we're going to look at um, water soluble pens now. So these are ones that do come off. I've um, got a couple here. This is an Aquatrick marker. We sell these ones in the shops. So that's made by Prim. This one's made by Soline. There's loads of makes of these brands of these pens. Um, and basically they come off with, um, if you either spray it with water or you can just use a paintbrush, I'll show you that in a second. So let's use the Aquatrip marker. These are brilliant if you're not so confident with drawing and you're but worried you might go off your line a little bit or if you're tracing it as well and you haven't traced it quite right, you can just erase it, wait till it's dry and put it back in again. So really great if you're not so confident with your drawing these and you'll see me use these in quite a few of our videos as well because I don't need to worry so much on the camera about how accurate I am. It's harder to stitch under the camera um, and then I can just spray it with water afterwards and that line will disappear. So these are really great. I'm quite a convert to these pens and you can see how well that shows up as well on the white fabric. Obviously, if you're using some different colours, you would need to test that out first. But it goes on really, really nicely. It's a beautiful, fine nib as well so you can get a nice accurate line with it. And then what I'm going to do is just to demonstrate I'm going to put some little antenna in there, just freehand those and then we'll put some water on and show you how that disappears. Now, what you don't need to do with this is to stick your entire embroidery in a bowl of water. Um, I know some people have um, mentioned that to me, or oh, I'm a bit worried about doing that. You don't need to do that. This comes off very easily with water. So you can just have a light water spray, just a couple of sprays, and that will disappear. If the line should come back, which it can do, just spray it again, because all the ink hasn't gone out of it. Um, but if you want to get rid of um, the lines more accurately, don't use a spray, just use a paintbrush. So I've got a paintbrush here, just a little bit of water. And we'll just demonstrate on this here. You can see how easily that comes out with the water. So if you just wanted to remove a very particular bit, you haven't done quite uh, straight lines, not quite straight, and you want to do it again, you don't need to soak the whole thing. Just a little bit of water will get that out. And then you do need to wait for that to dry before you go over again, otherwise the line will just disappear. Um, I just want to mention at this point there are air erasable pens as well, and they basically work in the same way. Um, they use the moisture in the air and then that makes the pens disappear. So they're really the same thing. Um, the problem with those is sometimes they disappear while you're still working on them, depending on the environment you live in. If you live in a very humid place, they'll disappear quite quickly. So these ones are better because you can control um, when that line disappears. So I wanted to talk about fabric markers because there are lots of these around now. Um, they're quite popular and they're pens that will draw straight onto fabric. And you think, well, that sounds like a logical thing to draw a design on with. So let's try one of those and um, come in loads of colours. This is made by Tulip, but loads of other people are making these fabric markers as well. Um, and you can pick which colour you want again to go with your threads or your fabric, whichever. So let's try one of these. Again, just try it out on a bit of fabric first. Make sure your pen works for one thing. These have got quite large nibs on them, um, but they do have um, a fairly fine point on the end. So I think if I turn it up that way, I should still be able to get a reasonably fine line. So let's try these. I've never used these for actually transferring it, but I thought it would be good to give it a go. And because they're fabric ones, they shouldn't run into the fibres. I don't know what the difference in the ink is. And you usually with fabric markers have to heat them to set them. So you have to iron them to set them. But I don't think this is coming out if I go wrong. So just going carefully with this. You can get a reasonably fine line even though that nib is quite large. 
but I am going very carefully. I'm quite a confident drawer as well, so if you're not, just practice on a bit of paper beforehand. Okay, well that came out fairly well, I think. So another option for you if you've got some of those. So I'm going to look at friction pens now. So that's pens that come off with heat. Um, now I looked into the ink that is in these and it's extremely scientific and it explains why these pens are quite expensive um, in as far as a pen goes. Um, they are more money and there's a lot of science in, in this ink that goes into this pen because it disappears when you apply heat to it. And I haven't really used these pens much for this so I had a little go with them um, and they're quite exciting but it was kind of trying to think of a practical use for it. So let's try one on here and then we'll talk about them bit more so I've got a red one and a black one and what they do is they've got this end on them here so if you use them on paper you can draw and then you can literally use that like an eraser and you can rub the line out and the line disappears so I thought it might be good for drawing um, my designs out on paper so I draw them first and um, I print them onto tracing paper and then I use that for pricking so this could be a good opportunity to do that so I can get a nice line on my pricking and if I don't do the right line I can just rub the end out and do it again so that might be one use but let's try it on the fabric so I've got quite a nice fine nib in it let me just make sure ink's running and they do come in lots of colours as well and I know people rave about these pens but I'm not sure about for this purpose. I'm it's a bit difficult to get it to work. Uh, there we go, it's flowing a bit better now. And obviously you can't use the end to rub it out on here. You don't want to agitate the fabric. You'll damage the fibres in the fabric. So you wouldn't use that on fabric. But what you can do with this, I tried it out, is to iron it. Now you wouldn't really want to iron it specifically once you've stitched with it. You don't want to iron your stitches. But I did discover that if you just held the iron very close to the top, just over the top of it, the heat from the iron did make the pen disappear. So you don't need to actually touch the fabric. So that was quite exciting. So you can get that off if you don't draw it in the right place. But you would have to take all of it off. I don't really know how you'd get just a small part of it off. But it does come off. They're quite nice to write with. Now the ink's flowing a little bit better. And I should imagine they're good for things like quilting. So you can draw on your quilts. You can draw your angles and your seam allowances. And then when you iron your quilt, the pen disappears. So it does have its uses. And it's drawn on quite nicely. You've got quite a nice fine line with that. And I know if that goes wrong, I can get that off if I want to. And I know that's appealing to a lot of people. Um, so that's a friction pen. The next pen that I want to mention is um, an iron-on transfer pen. Now I'm not actually going to demonstrate this because I have done this in the video with the five methods for transferring a design, so I'm not going to film that again. So you can check that again up here if you haven't seen that one and you want to see how this pen works. But you may come across this um, on your travels and wonder what it's for, so I do just want to explain it. Um, so this one is made by Prim. And what you do with this is you don't draw directly onto the fabric with this, you draw onto um, a piece of paper with it. So I've drawn the little butterfly on the paper here. Um, it's quite a thick nib in it, this. It's very hard to get a delicate line. But what you can do with that then, drawn on that side, you would then turn that over, place that in position, and you iron with quite a hot iron to get that off. And that will print directly onto the fabric. Now, there's some fabrics it doesn't work with. Um, so as with all of these pens I'm trying, you need to test it on the fabric you want to use. Silks can be quite difficult. Silk doesn't take a lot of these pens. I mean, it won't take this pen either. Um, it works best on synthetic fabrics, this pen. But what you can do with it, which is great, is you can get multiple prints out of it. So I can iron it once and get my butterfly. I can move that. I can iron it again, I can get another one exactly the same. So if you wanted lots of the same thing, this is a really um, good pen to consider. So the last one that I want to have a go at isn't actually a pen or a pencil. Um, we're going to look at paint. Um, paint is pretty good if you're into conservation um, and to um, think about what's going to happen to your embroideries long time in the future. The problem with these pens is they've got a lot of interesting inks in. There's a lot of chemistry in there, a lot of chemicals and all sorts of stuff and oil and everything in them. And I don't know what they 
um, effect they have on the fabrics further down the line. So if you want to consider that, um, consider using a paint. These are well tried and tested. This is an acrylic paint, so this one won't come off um, if your fabric gets wet. So if you wanted to make something to wash a cushion cover or something, you could use this and it won't come off. You can get fabric paint as well, which will do the same. You set that with heat, so you would iron that to set it, and then that won't come off um, as well. So you can use fabric paint. Um, we're just going to have a go with this acrylic. What you need to do with paint is make sure um, you've got some tissue handy. Um, because I've used the prick and pounce method for this, um, it will pick up the pounce powder in the brush. So I'll need to wipe the brush regularly. Um, and the brush, just show you that there. It's not about how um, small you can get your brush. You don't need one with three hairs. It's not about that at all. It's how good the point of the brush is. You need the bristles to hold the paint. If you've only got three hairs in there, it doesn't hold any paint and you have to keep going back to your your paint source so you don't necessarily need the smallest but do get a brush with a nice point on it and that will allow you to get that accuracy so i've just put a bit of paint in this pot here and i'm going to wet it a little bit the acrylic can be quite thick and it won't go onto the fabric it needs to flow but not flow so much it soaks into the fiber so there's a little bit of a fine line between what's the right amount and what isn't so i do suggest you definitely try this first so I'm just going to mix that up. I think that's quite good. I'm going to wipe that off and then just pick up a little bit on the point like so. And let's just try it on a bit of fabric. See, it's flowing. It is flowing and it's not soaking in. So I know that's right. So let's have a little go on here. Now the acrylic will dry quite quickly. If you're in a warm environment, it will dry even faster. You can, with a bit of practice, get some really nice lines with this. Just wipe your brush off, get that powder out if you're using this method. This is really, if you use the prick and pounce method, you wouldn't use a light box and a paint method, really. I'm having to dip my brush in quite regularly because it's quite dry, but I don't want to make the paint any wetter in case it soaks in. But a really good permanent way To put your design on if you wanted to consider the future as in 100 or so years down the line and you want your piece to survive and when I did my apprenticeship this is the way we put all our designs on most of the designs on was using this method so it takes a bit more practice than the pens And again, obviously, you can use whatever colour you want to. So once acrylic dries, it won't come off. It turns in a kind of a plastic, um, so it's pretty permanent. Just going to stop there. So that does take a bit more practice, but a good one to consider if you're interested in conservation. So I want to have a quick look at dark fabrics and what pens and pencils you can use on that. But before I do that, I just want to mention a couple of points to think about when you're trying out different pens and pencils. Um, the first one we have talked about already is the ink in the pens and how they react in the future, whether they come back, whether they mark the fabric, whether they rot the fabric. Um, oil can rot fabric and some of these are oil based, so they may very well do that in the future. So that's something to consider um, if that's um, important to you um, as to which pen you use for that. And the other thing that I would definitely say is there are loads of different kinds of pens around. Um, so try what you like, but do practice on a scrap bit of fabric first um, just to see what the pen does, see how wide the nib is, see how fine a line you can get, see if it does anything blobby or anything unexpected or if it soaks into the fabric. Some pens might do that and soak into the fibres and that's not what you want. So definitely just try out your pen um, before you use it on your actual piece. 
So the last thing to consider is what you are going to make with your piece. Um, so think about whether you're going to wash it or not, because that might help decide which pen you want to use. You don't want one that's going to, ink's going to spread in the wash. So again, you could try it and could just put that sampler in the wash and see what that does before you use it. Okay, so let's have a quick look at dark fabrics. Now, obviously I've tried everything on a white fabric, but what happens if you want to use a different color fabric, what can you use on that? So I've got the darkest I can find. I've got a navy fabric here and I've drawn some butterflies on here and we're just gonna try a couple of the methods out on here. So these are all things that we've already used, um, but I just want to show you what they look like on the dark fabric. So the first thing we're going to look at is a white pencil. Now this one is actually made by Prim and this one is meant for drawing on fabric with. Um, so the lead is a little bit softer so it will go on more easily. So again, nice and sharp point on it. Now I haven't got this in a frame, so this is gonna move, but this will be quite a good example of why you should have it in a frame. But it's a small design. So that's a little bit harder than I was expecting, actually. It is going on. You have to press a bit harder, so you might want that hard surface underneath. But it's like sort of using an accurate French chalk, if you've ever done any dressmaking and you've marked it with French chalks, kind of like French chalk in a pencil, really, so you can do a more accurate line. But it does show up reasonably well, certainly well enough to stitch to, but it is a little bit harsh gone. It doesn't draw as nicely as the pens, but it does go on like that. So that's a pencil, um, white pencil on dark fabric. So let's look at the gel pens now. So we've got quite a few mates who looked at these earlier. So let's pick the jelly roll one because I know these ones are really nice on the dark fabric. So just try a little bit first. Does blob a little bit if you're not careful, so just get the ink running first. That's quite important to try it beforehand. Let's see how well that shows up. Yeah, that's going on much nicer than the pencil. That goes on really nicely. And they're more opaque the ink in these so you're going to see them a little bit easier and as I did before let's just try the middle in that fluorescent colour just so you can see what that looks like that's great colour it doesn't have to be be fluorescent as I mentioned before but a bright colour of this does go on a dark fabric really well not just a dark fabric, even a mid-tone fabric where maybe the other pens don't show up. These jelly roll pens are really good. That shows up really well on there. So definitely a good one for a dark fabric, that one. And then we'll just do the paint again for the last one. So I'm going to do some white paint this time. Again, you'll just need to test it first, just get the right consistency. If it's too runny, it will just soak into the fibres. Just wipe it off first. Nice fine point, just pick up a bit of that paint. Okay, that goes really nicely on this fabric. You just get the right consistency, it flows really beautifully and that nice fine point means you can get a really accurate design. Okay, so the white paint shows up really nicely on the fabric actually because it's um, really opaque so this is a good one um, if you've got a different colour other than white that you want to, to work on you can again choose any paint colour that you like um, and that will work on that. So I hope that's been useful to you. Um, we've looked at lots of different pens, but there are loads more out there. Um, so you can try those as well. So grab yourself a little bit of fabric and get your pens out and see which one you like the best. 
So if you've got a pen that's your favourite um, and you want to let me know, you can do that in the comments below. Um, do share the pen love and tell us what works really well for you. If you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. That will help more people to see it. Um, and do check out all our other videos. We've got loads more content on there. And I hope you'll find that really useful and I'll see you in the next video.